Hello Internet, Seth Skorkowski, and a few weeks back I made a video on 11 tips for making good player characters, and in it I said I was going to finish that off with tips on being a good player once you have your character. Well, today is that day. Sort of. Between the tips that I'd compiled and all the great ones that commentators suggested, the list that I was making had become just a little bit too long for a single video. I mean, it was freaking huge. So to keep that from either being a two-hour video that would be both a slog to make and a slog to watch, or rushing through them all so fast that it really wouldn't give any of them enough time to give them justice, I started kind of breaking that apart and splitting it up into bite-sized sections based off of common themes. This video is going to cover player mindset, how to best approach the gaming session. Now when I'm talking about being a good player, I'm talking about being the type of player that game masters and other players love playing with. Gaming is a group effort, and much of the popular advice out there tends to focus on tips for helping the player optimize their own character or maximize their own fun, but often neglects the rest of the table's enjoyment as well. And I've seen a good number of players over the years who were fantastic role players and they could do all the voices and all that fun stuff, but they were also very difficult to play with. Their fun ended with them. And those players ultimately didn't last that long because they detracted from the rest of the table's fun. And one of the best ways of being one of those awesome players that everyone loves playing with is having the right attitude. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing to remember is that you are not the only player. Tabletop RPGs are collaborative games with multiple players. And players who act like they're the only one in the room and that everything revolves around them, that irritates the rest of the table. This is where we start having issues like the player who's hogging the spotlight or steamrolls over all the other players, you know, forcing them to do whatever that player wants, uh, talks over everybody, or just has no regard for anyone else's enjoyment. So they shouldn't be all that surprised when the rest of the players don't don't enjoy playing with them no matter how awesome their player character is. The best players are ones that people enjoy playing with, and they're considerate to the rest of the table, and in the long run that means far more to me than anything else. So share the spotlight and allow the other players to play. In fact, don't just share the spotlight, but help aim it. The booster spits on the floor and says, I'll never tell you where that bomb is hidden. Till will start cutting off his fingers till he does talk. Nah, Dweebles has the best interrogation skills. You wanna take this one? Damn right I wanna take this. If you know another character is good at a particular skill, just go ahead and let them use it, or set things up for them to use it. This not only helps everyone involved be get involved and start playing the game and having fun, but also leads to a more successful game when the right characters are the ones doing the task that they're best at. So always support and encourage the rest of the players to be involved in the game, and that helps you know everyone have a great time and enjoy the session. I always say that gaming is a group effort, and players cannot forget that they're part of a team. And even if in character that might be at odds with one another or have whatever conflicts and dramas and opposing agendas inside the game world, the players should still be working together for everyone to have a good time. So whatever rivalries and grudges that the characters might come up with one another, the players still need to encourage and support each other to assure that none of those uh, things transfer over from the game world and into the area around the table, helping everyone have the most fun with them that we can. This is one of the biggest reasons why lone wolf characters don't work well with group games. Yeah, sure, they're great in books and movies, but in cooperative games, eh, lone wolves can become a bit problematic. You know, try to involve the other players whenever possible. Ask them to help you out, and be receptive to when the other player characters ask your character for help. You know, try to try to all work together. And one of the best ways of being a good team player is if your character is about to perform some action that's going to affect the rest of the group or has a high potential of disrupting the rest of the group. Talk about it with them warn them or confer with them out of character. Maybe someone can offer an alternate or a better plan. This can not only help circumvent those times when a player character might have some outrageously bad action that then blows up in everyone's face because they hadn't considered all the consequences or all the variables, but also helps the other players be involved in a team way whether their character is involved with that or not. You know guys, one of the people here is secretly a serpent person, and their disguise spell can be undone if they take a single point of damage. Now my character is the type that he isn't just going to keep waiting around on this. He has got to act. So what I'm thinking of doing is just walking up to the Baron and slinging a scalding pot of coffee in his face to see if it's him. 
Okay, yeah, I hear you, man, but if he's not the serpent person, that means you just assaulted the Baron for no reason, and that's going to get you an ass whooping from his bodyguards and probably thrown in jail afterwards. But because we're the friends of the jerk who just attacked the Baron, that might get us kicked out of here by association, or at the very least, ain't going to endear us to nobody else around here, meaning that it's going to be harder for us to talk to somebody to figure out who the serpent person is. And if it's not him, they're the real serpent person that's going to know that we're onto him and try to killeth. I mean, your character is impatient, but they're also really smart. I hadn't thought of that. But your character probably would have, so what you want to do is come up with a way that you can expose who our enemy is without tipping our hand off or maybe getting the rest of us thrown in jail as a result. So maybe you could do something like you stumble and you spill a cup of hot coffee on his hand or maybe shoulder into him real hard or something like that. You know, make it look like an accident. But also, if you tip our characters off to what you're planning to do, we could get our characters in position where to best react to whatever happens next. Okay, so we have a character who is tired of waiting and is going to act, and that's perfectly fine, but instead of just walking up there and enacting a bad plan without warning anyone at all of what they were going to do, or you know, having forgotten some critical details that their intelligent character wouldn't have forgotten, the player said, hey, this is what I'm thinking about doing and why. Then the other players were able to redirect that action into one that is better, but also be involved in the game, and not just be involved out of character uh, by discussing it with the player of what it's going to be, but also have Having it be where the plan could include their characters so they could be in position first. This is so much better than having the player just set fire to an apartment building without any warning at all, either in character or out of character warning. And now the game is spiraling off into a bad direction and all the work that the rest of the players have done has been all just thrown out the window and now they're mad at that one player for what they did and they don't know why that player even did that in the first place. So just confer or at least warn the rest of the table what you're going to do or you're planning to do but also give them the reasoning behind it. If nothing else, you're acknowledging to the other players that, you know, that they are also part of the game, and which really, that's all that makes the difference in the world. In my experience, when a player does something that causes blowback to the rest of the group or undermines the rest of the group plan, the rest of the group is more upset because they feel like that player was acting like they're in a solo game and not considering them, then they're upset about the fact that their plan got wrecked. You know, plans go south all the time for various reasons, so it's more about the feeling that they were disrespected than anything else. And if nothing else, it helps warn the Game Master about what's going to happen so the GM can mentally prepare a suitable reaction to that. Which brings us to the one member of the team who could always use support, the Game Master. Game mastering can be a lot of work and have a pretty steep learning curve at times, but I personally find it very rewarding. However, with all the rules and trying to wrangle all the players and trying to focus your attention between them all and keeping track of, you know, the game master's own stuff, it can get a bit frustrating. More so when the players treat the game master like they're an outsider or an adversary or simply that they have to handle all that work on their own. So help the game master out. If you have a player at the table who's looking for a rule or something and maybe they're wanting to ask the game master you know, maybe try to help answer that player's questions so the Game Master can keep running the game rather than having to stop and change mental gears in order to answer it. Or if a player is distracted on their phone or they're interrupting other people, maybe give that player a nudge and tell them to focus up or hold off on whatever it is they want to say until whatever is going on is done. It can really wear a Game Master out if they're the only one handling all those little tasks. And if the Game Master does have to reprimand a player even lightly, that can escalate or cause a, a sort of of a defensive reaction or come off as being adversarial, so when having players hold each other accountable can really easily diffuse that. If the game master is having to look up a rule in the book and they're flipping through the book and the game is ground to a halt and you know now they're getting even more stressed out because everybody's staring at them, waiting for them to find the answer to whatever it is, if you have the book, go ahead and look for that information too just to speed that whole process along. I found it here. It's on page 152. Oh, thank you. I can never express how much I appreciate that as a game master, especially when you have all the other players who have the book right there and they're just sitting there looking at the game master and not helping and even getting irritated with the fact that the game master can't find the rule fast enough. Dude, hurry up. I could have found that by now. Then open up your damn book there and tell them where it is.
Next, come with a positive attitude. One of the big points that I talked about in the RPG Social Contract is that before each session, every player, even the Game Master, needs to take a moment to think, whatever happens, I'm going to have fun today. This makes us receptive to what the game is rather than what the game isn't. And it sounds silly to do, but it is also very, very effective. And it's not just that you're making yourself open to whatever the game offers, but it helps you let go of whatever it is that you might be taking with you and could possibly ruin your fun. You know, work, family, life, whatever stresses there are, one of the reasons that we play these games is to escape all that for a little while and just to have fun. So leave all that stuff at the door. Don't drag yourself or anyone else down with it. Players who show up grumpy or looking for disappointment are going to have a much harder time enjoying the game. And that can end up hurting not just their enjoyment, but everyone else's enjoyment around the table. And if you are frustrated or having a bad day, because, you know, come on, everybody has bad days, don't take that bad mood out on the game. Yes, it can do anything in RPGs that you want, but just because you're having a bad day at work or at the moment and you see the king and you pull out your bow and you shoot him in the face because you're just in a bad mood and that's going to make you feel better, yeah, okay, that's going to make you feel a little bit better for a moment, but you know, lashing out your anger into the game is just going to be poisoning the pool that everybody's playing in. I mean, it's like you just flip the table on everybody. So sure, yes, that probably felt good, but now the game is over and everyone else is going to be pissed at you. So if you're frustrated by something that's going on in the game, whether you know that be another player or just something that's happening inside the game world, before you let that ruin your fun and everyone else's fun, just call a timeout and talk about it. Address the issue before it escalates. Because once a player lashes out and sinks the game, whatever originally caused that player's frustration is just going to be meaningless now because the player's behavior and their reaction to that frustration is now the only thing that everybody else is going to remember. One of the biggest tips that I can ever give when it comes to a positive attitude while playing is just to play around your failures. You know, sometimes the dice are just not working that day, and of course that's happened to all of us as well, but if your character is failing skill checks and trumping their weapons, just roll with it, embrace your failures, and laugh. Yes, we want our characters to be awesome badasses who do badass things. That's normal. I want my players to have badass characters, and I want them to have, be awesome with those characters, but at the same time, the best stories come out of failures. Those are the ones that we reminisce about the most. I mean, look at all my war story videos. Most of those are about failures. For Thor, we had a barbarian who kept failing a simple task until it became a legendary campaign-changing story. My first TPK, that could have easily been a nightmare session. Just a single player not embracing the cascading failures could have ruined everyone's fun. But because all of us just rolled with it and we embraced it, that session was an absolute blast, and it's one that we still laugh about today. It's not always easy to do. I mean, we can't control our dice, but we can control how we react to our dice. So don't let your dice ruin your fun, and don't let your frustration at your dice ruin everyone else's fun. Because in the end, having fun is what gaming is all about, and the best players are the ones that everyone wants at their table, and the ones that are fun to play with, no matter what happens. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of our stuff, such as game reviews or how-tos, just hit that subscribe button. Till next time, amigos, stay awesome. Dude, have you found that rule yet? I know I have seen it in here somewhere. Oh, I haven't got all day.